Christ is risen? He is risen indeed. Alleluia. May the grace and peace of our loving God and Father, which is yours through our resurrected Lord Jesus Christ, be yours now and always. Amen. Our text for this morning is found in the inspired work, words of Luke, chapter 24, verses 1 to 11. Please stand. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, he is risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee? The Son of Man must be delivered over to the hands of sinners, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. Then they remembered his words. When they came back from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and to all the others. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the others who had who had, who, and the others with them who told this to the apostles. But they did not believe the women because their words seemed to them like nonsense. That is the word of our God. You may be seated. In Christ Jesus, dear Christian friends, who because of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ can look forward to being with him in heaven. When the Apostle Paul wrote, to the, wrote the first letter to the congregation in Corinth, he talked about the crucifixion of our Lord Jesus Christ. And he said to the crucifixion, or he said rather, we preach Christ crucified. And then he said to the Jews, it's a stumbling block. And to the Gentiles, he said it's foolishness. The Apostle Paul also, if you remember, went in Athens to the Areopagus and spoke to the gathering of wise people up there. And it's recorded they listened to him intently until he got to the resurrection. <laughs> and when he got to the resurrection, they got smiles on their faces like I have right now. And they said, good, we'll hear you another day. To them, that was nonsense. But Paul went on, but to those whom God has called, the power of God and the wisdom of God. The crucifixion and especially the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ are the power of God unto salvation. To the rest of the world around us, to many today, it is still a matter of nonsense. And if you remember the last verse of the text here, when as far as the apostles were concerned, it says when the women told them what had happened, they did not believe the women because their words seemed to them like nonsense. In a sense, it is nonsense, but glorious nonsense. And that's the theme of this morning's sermon, the resurrection, glorious nonsense. The first thing is that tomb, the tomb that the women went to and were worried about the fact that somebody was going to have to often open it for them. But when they got there, the tomb was open and it was empty. The stone had been rolled away. And that stone wasn't something light. Those tombs were areas inside the limestone rock that were cut. They were big areas. They probably could put six to eight people in their death in, the, in those graves. 
when they were built, they were built for that purpose so they, they could house a whole family when they died. And what they did is they cut ledges on the sides of those chambers where they could lay their dead bodies. And then they would roll this big stone in front. I don't know how many of you have ever been to Palestine, but they show you a couple places where Jesus might have been buried. And one of them is in one of those limestone chambers with a great big rock rolled in front. Joseph of Arimathea, who had buried Jesus there, had wrapped his body in spices and then linens and then rolled that stone down. It wasn't hard to roll down because the stone was put on an incline. But it was very difficult to get it back up again. So the women had something to worry about. Except when they got there, it was open. And there was nobody in that grave. You remember that, well, those of you who I might remember from this, the videos that we showed during Lent, when Jesus had died and been buried, the high priest and the rest of the uppers of the Jewish people went and talked to Pilate and they said, we need you to put your seal on that tomb. And then we need you to put guards there. So that somewhere along the line here, they don't say, his disciples can't say that he rose from the dead and disappeared. It was kind of interesting to see Pilate's reaction. He sat there and he hadn't had enough of them, but he finally said, okay, seal the tomb and put the guards to whatever you have to do in order to make it as secure as you possibly can. <laughs> Didn't work. The tomb was open. The seal was broken. The stone was rolled away. The answer is that there had been an earthquake. And when that earthquake came, it was either caused or part of the coming of that angel. In Matthew 28, it says, There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb and rolled back the stone and sat on it. You could say nonsense. It is nonsense. But glorious nonsense. Because what that stone rolled away in that empty grave said was that Christ is risen, he is risen indeed. Another thing that's interesting about that is those angels. When you read the Gospels, you find that one or two of them say there was one angel and the others say two. And biblical critics have had fun with that to no avail because the fact of the matter is it just depends upon who it was that went there and what they saw when they got there. Some of them didn't go any further than looking at the tomb and hearing the angels say he has risen while others went inside the tomb and saw another angel. What's important is not the fact that they were there as much as their message. The message that they brought was he is risen. You heard it in our text. The women bowed down when they saw those angels with their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. Christ the Lord had risen from the dead. God, his father, had raised him as had been promised. And we're told in the other Gospels that inside that tomb, when Peter and John went in there, what they found was the grave cloths laying just the way they had been wrapped around Jesus, except for one cloth. And that was the one that was over his face. That was neatly folded and placed to the side. Christ had been risen from the dead. The Father had raised him from the dead. He is risen. It's what the angels told him. And not only that, but he is the first fruits, we are told, of them that slept. The thing about the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ is it assures you and me that we too are going to rise. 
Jesus had said, as I live, you also will live. He had said, in my father's house there are many mansions. If it weren't that way, I would have told you so. But I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and take you to myself that where I am there, you may also be. What he told us there was that we are going to be with him in heaven. The death of our Lord Jesus Christ, as I said before, assures you and me of a number of things. One is that he is the Son of God, and therefore we can trust his word. The second is that God accepted Christ's death on the cross as the payment for our sins. If Jesus were still in the grave, we wouldn't be here, would we? There would be nothing to believe in. But with a risen Christ, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus Christ, we can be sure that God accepted his payment for our sins when he died on that cross. And finally, that means that we too will be with him in heaven. The disciples, of course, had a hard time with that. It, it's hard to imagine in some respects that they did have such a hard time. Jesus had told them three times over the last couple of months that the Son of Man must be turned over to the Gentiles by the chief priests and the scribes, that he would be beaten, that he would be scourged, that he would be mocked, and finally that he would be crucified. But he always added something, and on the third day he will rise again. In that video that we saw, when Jesus was taken captive in the Garden of Gethsemane, as he walked away surrounded by the guards, he turned to his disciples and went like this, three, three days, just three. But they didn't get it. They didn't get it. They just, just couldn't imagine that. To them it was nonsense. To you and me, it can't be nonsense, can it? We depend on that resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's the assurance that we have of the forgiveness of our sins in Christ Jesus. That's how we can go to the Lord's Supper and recognize the fact that we get the true body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, our risen Lord Jesus Christ, as he said, for the forgiveness of your sins yours and mine. To the rest of the world, it may be nonsense. But to you and me, it's glorious nonsense. Because Christ the Lord is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia and amen.